As Moses would hand their Spartan sons their shield before they went off to the barracks, they would say, with this or upon this. This showed the young warrior that he should come back with the shield in hand or dead upon it. Around 500 BC, there was a place called Sparta in the region of Laconia in southern Greece, renowned for its fierce units of Spartan warriors. Leonidas, king of Laconia and a great military leader of the time, led the Spartans as they faced war against the almighty Persian Empire. Sparta wanted no part in war, but after the Persians started terrorizing small city-states within Laconia, the Spartans welcomed war with the Persian leader, Xerxes. Although there were many strong armies at the time, the Spartans proved superior through their discipline and training, skill with weapons, and tactics that enabled them to destroy many of the enemies that dared to fight against them. The Spartans were ruthless in battle due to the harsh and extensive training they endured through their adolescence. Even from birth, Spartans were held to a high standard. Babies would be inspected after birth, and if they were deformed or frail, they would be thrown off a cliff to die. If the male baby was kept, then he would be sent to the barracks at the young age of seven. He would be schooled there and trained for battle until the age of 20. In the barracks, all boys were given minimal portions of food to get them accustomed to hunger and poor conditions. They were encouraged to steal food from local markets to make them sneakier. However, if they were caught, they would be punished, usually with a strict beating. The soon-to-be warriors were also encouraged to fight to prepare them for close combat and war. Whip bearers would watch after younger kids and physically beat them if they misbehaved. At the age of 18, boys who excelled during their training took part in a separate and more extensive training called Kripatia. These elite members were given no food, shelter, or clothing and were sent off to survive alone in the wilderness. At age 20, training was complete and the boys were now Spartan men, ready to fight for their city-state. The Spartan soldiers lived in barracks, ate together, and became close brothers in arms. The Persian army, however, consisted mostly of conquered peoples. The Persians did give their conquered peoples 10 years of training, but it didn't compare to the Spartans' devotion to becoming a fierce warrior. The elite warriors of the Persian army were called the Immortals. They were called this because when one man was killed, another man would appear in his place. A major component of the Spartan training was to fight together, which differed from their enemy, the Persians, who did not have a close bond that the Spartans had crafted. Because of the strict training and preparation for war, Spartans were a highly effective unit that made them extremely formidable in battle. The Spartans were also extremely gifted with their weapons and their skill, which helped make them superior to any other ancient warrior of the time. As a primary weapon, the Spartan used a 9-foot spear made out of cornell wood named a dory. The dory had a sharp spearhead at the top and was whittled into a sharp point on the opposite end called a lizard killer, so it could be used either way in battle. The Persians also carried a spear but was less effective because it was shorter. In the Persians' case, they relied heavily on bows and bronze-tipped arrows. Even though the dory was the main weapon each Spartan possessed, he also had a xiphos, which was a small sword-like weapon which was only used in close combat. The unique thing about this blade is that it was smaller than the ones other Greek warriors possessed at the time. While the Persians had a dagger, the Spartans were issued an axe-like weapon called a copus, also known as the bad guy, because it left the enemy in a bloody mess rather than a clean kill. The Persians' unprotected legs and only lightly protected head allowed the copus to be particularly devastating. However, the most fundamental piece of the equipment that the Spartans carried was their shield. Each shield was roughly 30 pounds and consisted of a strong inner layer of wood, covered in a thick coating of bronze. These shields held the Greek letter Lambda, that stood for Laconia, their home region. The shields could also be used for pushing back the enemy to gain ground. Persian shields were made of wicker and were usually covered in animal hide. The Spartans were often superior to their Persian counterparts because they had particularly lethal weapons and they knew how to use them effectively. As Sparta and Persia clashed in war, the Spartans showed they had smarts to go along with their incredible physical strength. One dominant tactic that the Spartans utilized was the phalanx formation. In this formation, the Spartans stayed close together in an organized group and would use their shields to protect themselves from all angles. The warriors stood next to their comrades with their shields held side by side with spears projecting out. This tactic can only be effective if the warriors act as a whole and don't wander from the pack. However, some Spartans did leave the unit in a state of rage and adrenaline that was known as bloodlust. If a Spartan left the formation, a gap in the unit would allow enemies to attack more freely. The Persians' main tactic during war was to simply overrun their opponent with their overwhelming numbers. This contrast in tactics between a tight-knit unit of Spartans and an unorganized Persians was very evident at the Battle of Thermopylae. Using the narrow mountain pass to their advantage, the Spartans defended and fought courageously against the Persian army that vastly outnumbered them. 
300 Spartans that decide to stand by Leonidas at Thermopylae maintained their tactic by fighting as a close, disciplined unit as opposed to the Persians who had no effective plan going into war. This gave a strong advantage to the Spartans because they could not be flanked or overwhelmed by enemies. Leonidas and his men stayed to fight which delayed the Persian advance and allowed some fellow Spartans and Greek allies to return to defend their homeland. Going into the Battle of Thermopylae, Leonidas knew it would be his last but he fought to prove the Spartans would never surrender. The Spartans at Thermopylae were successful in delaying the Persians, and even though the Spartans were overrun, their bravery has become legendary. The tactics of the Persians contrasted with that of the Spartans. Their tactic was to shoot massive amounts of arrows at the enemy, but this was largely ineffective against the Spartan phalanx. The Persian soldiers were often whipped from behind, whereas the Spartans considered it as an honor to represent Sparta. Their eagerness for battle drove to higher levels of fighting, often led to success against their enemies. The Spartans' tactics allowed them to gain superiority over enemies like the Persians. The Spartans used their intelligence to assess the field of battle in a well-thought-out plan that included the higher morale and confidence when fighting with their fellow Spartans. When Spartan mothers directed their sons to come back with their shield or upon it, they were emphasizing the courage and boldness that a Spartan warrior was expected to have. A Spartan warrior was devoted to not backing down, fighting hard, and relying on one another. Although the Spartans had one loss at the Battle of Thermopylae, they are legendary in history because of their brave fight with far fewer men in that battle. The Spartans' devotion to military discipline, rigorous training, and effective tactics set them apart as the superior warriors of the ancient world. The soldiers worked together as a unit and this made their weapons especially deadly, striking fear into their enemies. Later the Spartans defeated the Persians who never threatened Greece again. The courage of the Spartans fighting as one allowed them to withstand armies like the Persians who were much greater in size.